everyone, I'm Katie from Nutritionist Resource and Happy Fall. Today I'm joined by Victoria Hamilton, a registered nutritionist and autoimmune disease expert and, and member of Nutritionist Resource. Today we're going to be chatting about autoimmune disease and the role that nutrition and certain diets can play in the development and a potential uh, management of these specific conditions. Um, but first, Victoria, I would love it if you could introduce yourself and share a little bit about how you got into the field of autoimmune disease. Yeah, so my name, as, as you kindly said, is Victoria Hamilton. I am an autoimmune disease expert and I'm also a registered nutritional therapist. Um, so my journey started when I was seven years old and I was first diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Um, and really, no one really knew what autoimmune disease was then, but it was always part of my life. And I went on to develop several other autoimmune diseases to the point that I was so interested in it that I went to university and studied the immune system, so immunology. And I, as part of that, I actually studied autoimmune disease and one called vasculitis, which is inflammation of the vessels. So then I, then I decided I wanted to work in the corporate environment. And I <laughs> then went to work as a chartered accountant for over 10 years, which was an amazing experience. I did some amazing things, but I still loved science and my health continued to go downhill at that point I got diagnosed with post viral chronic fatigue syndrome and then as I um, I decided I was going to study nutritional therapy and discovered functional medicine as well and realized that for years I'd been thinking about my own symptoms but really I should have been thinking about the underlying uh, root cause of my conditions and by addressing the underlying root cause I was able to you know, all the symptoms that I was experiencing, um, I, they all disappeared within 12 months of following a protocol. It looked at addressing the root cause rather than just thinking about my symptoms. And I did lots of diagnostic testing as a result of that. So fast forward six years and I have been symptom free for that amount of time. And now I'm working as a nutritionist and absolutely loving it and helping people that have had really a similar journey to me. So I'm working with lots of women um, and I'm helping them really regret, regain their strength and living a symptom free life life and feeling better about themselves and their life as well uh, so yeah it's been a long one but I'm so glad that I got here and I I really truly have more energy now than I did at 18 years old uh, so I really believe that everything that I've done with a lot of diet nutrition and lifestyle has been completely transform transformational to my own health wow that's amazing thank you for sharing that journey um, <laughs> Sorry, it's a long one <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you got there in the end so that's really great <laughs> Um, so the latest data we have for autoimmune disease, so conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, suggests that approximately 4 million people living in the UK have um, an autoimmune disease, and that number is sadly rising. There are a lot of undiagnosed autoimmune diseases. Um, and we know, as um, Victoria kindly shared as well, that dietary choices, sleep, lifestyle, they can all impact whole body health. So today we're going to share um, some frequently asked questions um, with Victoria and get some expert guidance on how food and lifestyle could specifically support in the management of autoimmune diseases. Um, so I think we'll start there. So Victoria, for anybody watching, could you first explain exactly what is an autoimmune disease? So uh, we, we don't actually, the science doesn't know specifically what autoimmune disease is, but they are categorized as there's a lot of different conditions that are autoimmune disease. And what they have, what, what they all have as, um, as a similar feature is that the immune system starts att attacking our own tissue. Now there are various mechanisms that have been shown um, to cause this, but really it's when you, for whatever reason, your body, it may target specific parts of the tissue which means that you, it can be systemic so I mentioned earlier that I looked at vasculitis well that's the vessels and vessels mm -hmm. are everywhere but it can be something like you having multiple sclerosis where it attacks specifically the myelin sheath which is this bit above the nerve so it stops the nerve functioning properly so it can be specific or it can just be the immune system attacking self tissue and it's normally related to people having this kind of low grade systemic inflammation um, and there are lots of different um, 
factors that may contribute to somebody developing autoimmune disease. But the basis of it is that your immune system, for whatever reason, has decided to start attacking self tissue. And when it starts attacking self tissue, you end up with damage to that tissue. And as a result, you end up with a, a health condition such as autoimmune disease. Okay, so how can diet um, well, can diet cause an autoimmune disease or how can it play a part in the development of a disease? Yeah, so the interesting thing is, um, as I said, there are a number of factors that can lead to autoimmune disease. Um, and there is certainly a genetic predisposition. So, for example, in my family, we have lots of different autoimmune diseases, not really the same one, but lots of my family members will have autoimmune disease. So there certainly seems to be a genetic element and they have identified some genes that might relate to it. But it's not just like one gene, it will be, say, 100 genes that all come together and somebody is predisposed to it. The other thing is they always look at the environment and really that gets down to toxicity and stress. So how much toxicity does somebody have? And that can be from pollutants. It can be from um, eating non-organic foods. It can be from even viruses and bacteria. And then stress can actually be a physical stress, but it can also be an emotional stress. Mm -hmm. And the last one is um, to do with having increased intestinal permeability, which um, people may have heard of um, as leaky gut syndrome. And that's when you have these wider gaps in the digestive system, which let food particles and bacteria and everything else into the bloodstream and can cause the immune system to flare up. Now that's normally a normal process, but in this kind of leaky gut syndrome, those gaps are wider and they don't close as much. So I, I, am, I am getting to your question, Katie, but um, <laughs> it's a long way around. But because that, as I said, so you've got the toxicity part, which can be caused by food. Mm -hmm. You've also got, because of the leaky gut syndrome, a lot of food can cause this syndrome in the okay. digestive system. It can cause inflammation. Um, so food is a huge part of it. Um, and also in that kind of stress piece that I was mentioning as well, some foods are very good at bringing a type of stress down in the body. And so you need to make sure that you're having lots of those foods in the diet as well. Now, when we're eating a Western diet, mm -hmm. a lot of the foods in that diet are what we call pro-inflammatory. And that means when we digest them for various reasons, um, they can cause inflammation in your body. So for example, trans fats, when we're eating a lot of industrial seed oils in processed foods, they are known to be pro-inflammatory. High sugar foods are pro-inflammatory. So a lot of the foods that we end up consuming, normally the packaged goods um, can cause um, inflammation, which can then lead to autoimmune disease. So yeah, it's, it's a big factor, um, but it's kind of indirect in a way. It's not, you can't say this one thing causes that, but you know, due to the mechanisms that we know are involved in autoimmune disease, that uh, food has a, a, has a powerful influence on it. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned um, the Western diet can be pro-inflammatory. Is there um, another diet that is anti-inflammatory that you could recommend to people that you see in your clinic? Yeah, so there is there is kind of a concept of anti-inflammatory eating um, and part of that is to do with the paleo diet. I'm not sure if you've come across that, Casey, but yeah. um, it's where we eat um, like we did as cavemen almost um, um, and kind of taking those principles. And as part of that, people noticed that that was particularly this type of paleo diet was particularly helpful for people with autoimmune disease. Um, in about 2014, and a protocol called the autoimmune paleo diet was created. Um, and as part of that, you used um, kind of these paleo principles, but it also looked specifically at that factor, that contributing factor that I mentioned, leaky gut syndrome, and thinking about foods that could cause leaky gut syndrome for various reasons, just looking at the general population, because the protocol is very much something that anybody can use to help with autoimmune disease. I, I definitely recommend to, to work with a health practitioner on it and to be guided through it. Um, but it really is for everyone. Whereas as a nutritional therapist, we normally try and find out what potential foods might be triggering that person. Whereas what the autoimmune um, paleo diet really looks at is all the foods that could potentially trigger um, 
uh, gut inflammation and leaky gut syndrome and remove those from the diet for a short period of time while the digestive system heals. Because as I said, that is kind of a vital part of autoimmune disease and making sure we heal um, the gut uh, can really help with symptoms of autoimmune disease. So it's definitely worth looking into that. And those, the types of foods that are removed are things like dairy, uh, gluten, um, grains, legumes, even nuts and seeds. So some of these things are what we would definitely uh, consider to be healthy. And that's why it's very important that we reintroduce those foods. Um, and the other thing about anti-inflammatory eating is eating foods that are known to be anti-inflammatory. And those are things called antioxidants. So those colorful fruits and vegetables, the pigment in those uh, are antioxidants. They help uh, to bring down inflammation by reducing this thing called oxidative stress. Um, and also our, our omega-3 fats, so those fats that are found in oily fish and flaxseed and chia seed, they're really good at bringing um, inflammation down in the body. So using, and that's the thing about the autoimmune paleo diet, that it's about actually bringing in those nutrient dense anti antioxidant and um, inflammation reducing foods as much as taking foods out. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something that I would consider uh, with my clients and for, for people to look into as well, because it's very interesting research in that area. Yes, absolutely. And just to pick up on what you said um, about working with a nutrition professional, we do always recommend, um, because these diets will exclude some foods at the beginning that um, isn't recommended for a long term, we do always recommend working with the guidance of a nutrition professional. Um, so can you actually cure autoimmune disease through diet? That is the thing about autoimmune disease. Once you have one, as I, as you probably, I hope that I said this when I was telling my story, is that I will always have autoimmune disease, but I kind of see myself in remission or I have kind of, um, my symptoms have been reversed because there is, unfortunately there is no cure. And I think that is because there's a lack of an, an understanding of what actually causes it at this point. Mm -hmm. And it could be lots of different things. But I do believe that with diet, by thinking about the things that might be triggering autoimmune disease, we can really use diet to help um, with those trigger points. So if you can find out, for example, what might be triggering it, that might be what we just discussed, like a food sensitivity, mm -hmm. by taking that food out might be really, really beneficial. Uh, we know that inflammation is a factor in autoimmune disease. We don't know whether it's a cause or effect, but we know it's definitely there. So eating anti-inflammatory foods are gonna be really helpful. And we know the digestive system is key. So when we can eat foods that are gonna nourish the digestive system, and when I say that, I mean nourish our microbiome. So really, you know, lots of fat, you know, and that's why I said, and as you've said as well, Katie, we don't, we don't like, when I'm working with clients, I make sure when they remove foods that we're not removing food groups. For example, fiber is so essential for the microbiome. So thinking about gut nourishing foods as well. And that's why you've probably heard a lot about bone broth, but that's very, very good for the digestive system. So there are certainly things you can do with diet and it really just depends on your underlying root cause, how effective that can be. Now, if it's, if it's a food that's causing the issue in the first place, removing that and bringing in anti-inflammatory foods can be hugely beneficial. But if you have a chronic infection or something more complex, then food is certainly gonna make, I always say that to my clients, I'm like, you will feel better working with me 100%. And all my clients need to lose weight. They're not coming for me for weight loss. They, they sometimes say, I don't mind losing a bit of weight. They're coming for me, coming to me for autoimmune disease. But as a result of that, they get more energy, they lose weight, their skin gets better, all these other things can happen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, something that, you know, I work with lots of people with multiple sclerosis and that that's a very complex condition. People are taking medications. Um, so it's really just about feeling better and living better. Um, and yeah, I've, I've seen various results just with food because I think lifestyle plays an important part as well. And that can't be forgotten about. If you still have stress um, and you're not looking after yourself, then I don't think diet alone is going to be enough. Um, but thinking about it holistically can be really, really beneficial. Yeah. Um, so we've talked a fair bit about food, but I wondered, do you recommend supplementation in symptom management and particularly vitamin D? 
Is there any uh, research behind how vitamin D could help symptom management? Yeah, I think vitamin D is one of the really well studied supplements and I do use supplements with my clients especially when we know that there's a deficiency there there's lots you can do with bringing it bringing in um, nutrient dense foods I suppose it also depends on what what people are willing to eat because a lot of people still don't like eating fish so mm -hmm. bringing in um, you know very good quality fish oil can be very helpful for somebody that maybe is lacking in omega-3s and you can test for that you can also do a test for nutrient deficiencies um, and vitamin D is one that you can test for. Now, the interesting thing with vitamin D is if somebody is deficient, I mean, um, you can, uh, we all know, well, you may not, but a, a lot of people know vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin because yeah. you, when the UVB hits the skin, it forms vitamin D from the cholesterol in the skin. Um, so that's a very good way to, uh, you know, and in the summer, a lot of people will have adequate levels of vitamin D, but in the winter, they may become deficient. If one of my clients is deficient in vitamin D, then I would always recommend supplementing. Um, and a lot of the skin conditions that I work with, vitamin D is really, really important to help bring down that response, that in inflammatory response at, at the skin mm -hmm. level. Um, but there is really interesting research about taking extremely high doses of vitamin D um, and it's not something I use particularly with my clients but the research behind it is interesting and it's because vitamin D acts as a hormone in the body and uh, so it's quite a, it's quite an unusual vitamin and what can happen when your cell for, for various reasons and the studies these, these are very new studies but they're showing that for example people with multiple sclerosis taking very um, high strength vitamin D can be helpful. So you've got to look into why that might be the case, because as I said, vitamin D is quite complex how it works in the body, but the cells need to listen to vitamin D for it to work. And what can happen is they can stop listening to it because they become, can become dysfunctional for lots of different reasons. They have little receptors on them. What I'm saying here, it's like a receptor. <laughs> um, but so you have to kind of speak louder for them to hear. Um, and that's why potentially why people taking high strength vitamin D can be helpful. But it, it's not something I generally use in my clinical practice because vitamin D is, a, as I said, a complex vitamin and it needs things like vitamin K2. It has a has a role in calcium metabolism. Um, so you always have to be careful about just going in with one vitamin, I think. And that's why food is such a great option for everyone because food is made to consume with all different vitamins and it has the right fiber for you to digest it properly. So that's why whole food is really my first recommendation. Then I'll look for nutrient deficiencies and then we might do some other um, exploratory testing like stool testing, hormone testing. And as a result of that, we then might use some supplements. But really, I like to understand that there's a problem first before just bringing a supplement in. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do you see, is there a common autoimmune disease that you see in your clinic? And um, could you talk through any nutritional recommendations um, in general that you uh, would recommend? Yeah, so I do actually see a lot of skin issues with sometimes other autoimmune diseases. Um, and I certainly developed psoriasis when I was a teenager. So I work a lot with um, psoriasis mm -hmm. and um, people go on to get um, psoriatic arthritis as well. So um, there's, that, there's kind of the arth arthritic element to that. But um, so with, uh, sorry, with um, psoriasis, um, a lot of the time it's really kind of some of the things that I've already mentioned, but finding what that trigger is for me is key. Um, and a lot of the time I see with my clients that it can be dairy, um, gluten. It can be to do with the yeast overgrowth. I see that a lot with candida. Um, and you can, you can find that out through stool testing. Um, and there's some other tests for that as well. And actually metal toxicity is closely related. It can be a factor in psoriasis as well. So you can do urine tests to see. It's quite hard to test for heavy metals, but um, it does give you some indication um, whether that might be a factor. 
Um, and then really just working on, uh, you know, uh, if there is and if you do find that there's a trigger there, removing the trigger while that person is healing, especially if it's something like methyl toxicity or um, candida, we would address that first. Uh, then thinking about improving gut health. My kind of go-tos for that are really bone broth, collagen and stewed apples. <laughs> I really like stewed apples because they mm -hmm. release pectin and that feeds um, some bacteria that, that help with um, what we call immune tolerance in the digestive system. So that helps the immune response more appropriate in the digestive system. So you don't get that low grade systemic inflammation, which can contribute to skin issues. Because a lot of the time with skin issues, it really... You, you always have to be thinking what's going on in the digestive system. And so really working on the digestive system and then thinking about bringing down that inflammation. So as I mentioned, eating antioxidants and really thinking about eating as many plants as, as possible. That, that's really actually the way to think about it. Um, and a lot of the time I might say 10 portions, but it doesn't mean 10 portions of of fruits and vegetables. You can put that into stews, you can put that into soups, juices, smoothies. And so I think 10 is a bit daunting, but when you start including plants with every meal, um, it is easier to get them in. And I, I do think um, you know, the basis for everything should be bringing in plants um, and vegetable. Well, when I say plants, I mean vegetables and fruit, but I also mean herbs and spices are really powerful as well. And then for the nutrient density, I do recommend that my clients, if they can bring in an organ meat once a week, because it is a very <laughs> nutrient dense. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's cooked right, it does, it, 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 it can, I mean, I enjoy it, but I, my, my nana and granddad used to make it when I was little. So I think I've just got a taste for it. Um, but it's nice to bring that in once a week. The thing with the liver is it's high in vitamin A, so you don't want to be consuming loads of it. Yeah. Um, but obviously it's great if you have a vitamin A deficiency, that's certainly something that you could have. Um, and then shellfish, shellfish is extremely nutrient dense as well. So things like mussels, and that might just be something you think about when you eat out, because a lot of the time mm -hmm. we worry about eating out because it's like, especially if you're, you know, doing some kind of health protocol. It's like, oh gosh, what would I have when I, it, when I eat out? And to be honest, I ate out at an Italian restaurant um, a couple of days ago and I got liver. I mean, it looked a bit strange on my plate and everyone was like, well, what's that? But it tasted amazing. And you can, you know, a lot of Italian restaurants will sell mussels as well. So I always kind of go for those dishes when I'm out. And then, you know, I'm not eating anything that unhealthy. I'm actually eating quite a healthy food and going out and enjoying myself and seeing my friends and family. Um, so, yeah, thinking about, I'm always thinking about nutrient density and then the antioxidants. And then the only other thing I always um, look to, and it's part of kind of my signature program that I talk about in my um, clinic, is having a green juice every day. Now, again, that might seem like a lot, but having celery, cucumber, parsley, ginger, lemon, it's really, really good for the body. And if you can bring in that every day and you can make it in a batch and freeze it, and so you can just bring it out on the day and have it. Um, but having that every day is really, really helpful for skin conditions, because that's really gonna help um, with your liver and helping you um, kind of clear out any toxins that there might be. Um, so they're really the things that we're thinking about, but as part of that, we're also thinking about sleep. How's your stress? Mm -hmm. How much, how much time are you spending doing things you enjoy? Um, how much time are you spending outside? Um, are you journaling? You know, all these types of things I'm thinking about alongside the diet. I just think that's really important when we're, we're recommending working with a professional because they can look at everything as opposed to just the symptoms that you've got and they can address your whole lifestyle and not just diet as well. Um, so on that note, could you share how people could find you, sort of your website and social media if they wanted to reach out? Yeah, so I just called my brand something very simple. Uh, it's the Autoimmunity Nutritionist. That's the name of my clinic as well. So it's www the autoimmunity nutritionist.com and the autoimmunity nutritionist on um on instagram and mm -hmm. on facebook and on linkedin i'm on there as well and it's the autoimmunity nutritionist so it's just that yeah it's quite it's quite simple if you get the spelling right it's quite simple to find <laughs> <laughs> um 
Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a long one. I think my dad, when I set up my company, was like, I should have told you, you should have gone with a shorter name. <laughs> Well, does what it says on the tin. Um, Victoria is also a member of Nutritionist Resource. If you type in Victoria Hamilton into um, the search bar, it'll bring up her profile too, and you can message her directly from there. Um, great. So I think that's all that we have time for today. So thank you so much for joining us. That was really helpful. Thank you, Katie. And thanks for everything you at Nutritionist Resource and getting oh. all the information out, you know, health and nutrition. That's great. Um, so if you do have any questions for Victoria, please do um, reach out to her. And um, in the video description, there'll be links to her profile on Nutritionist Resource as well. So thank you very much. And we will speak to you soon. Thank you.